नमो बुद्धाय नमो धम्माय नमो संघाय जय भीम एंड वेलकम यू ऑल इन नवयाना बुद्धिस्ट संघा शॉर्ट डायलॉग एंड वी हैव विद अस बोधि एस आर अ सीनियर मेंबर ऑफ नवयाना बुद्धिस्ट संघा एंड टुडे वी विल डिस्कस द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट प्रैक्टिस इन बुद्धिज्म कॉल सकारात्मक पंचशील और पॉजिटिव प्रिसेप्ट्स आई रिक्वेस्ट सर टू प्लीज थ्रो सम लाइट on what what are the discussion surrounding this concept called positive precepts and what constitute this idea of positive precepts so i request sir please throw some light on this very fundamental practice in buddhism called sakaratmak panchashi please sir thank you so much uh, sujit uh you are correct this is a very important practice that many of us in every gathering that we meet we generally always state these uh, five positive precepts uh what is important to understand before we even begin to engage with the positive precepts is that they are what is generally also identified as the affirmative affirmation or the affirmative aspects of the panchashila while the five precepts in buddhism is more about refraining from destroying or killing creatures refraining from uh, taking what is not given to you refraining from uh, you know sexual misconduct refraining from hateful speech and from incorrect speech refraining from what is called intoxicants the positive precepts on the other hand are affirming certain kind of practices which are very critical in buddhism so today the way we have uh, we have uh, you have asked a question is much more to do with how what do we affirm in our day to day practice in buddhism so there are five of these the first one is generally what we call we, we if you state these particular points they read like this with deeds of loving kindness i purify my body so this is the first the second is with the with open minded generosity i purify my body the third is with stillness simplicity and contentment i purify my body so the first three are generally bodily related the fourth one with truthful communication i purify my speech and the fifth is with mindfulness clear and radiant i purify my mind so these are generally what you call the positive precepts and we always state these say these speak them out you know collectively as a group or as an individual also to affirm these kind of actions now if you go a little bit to the detail the first positive precept is about what we call loving kindness or metta in buddhism we call it metta so here with deeds of loving kindness which you affirm this idea of loving kindness loving kindness is seen as a way of cleansing or purifying the body now why is this so before we even begin to the details of it we must first understand how the how buddhism conceives this thing called the body in buddhism this body is full of sensations everything in the body is a sensation and these sensation are deeply embedded in cells that we have that constitutes your body and this body as we grow we eat we perform certain actions we speak every single act that we perform you begin what is called the conditioning of the cells in a particular manner so for instance an emotion like anger in buddhism the idea of emotions is generally what we define as thoughts manifested in your body that is generally what we call emotions in buddhism there is no distinction between the thought let's say the mind and the body both the thought the mind and the body is one so this emotions is a manifest of thought in your body so when you feel anger this anger is a manifestation that is much more source to the conditioning of every sensation of your body it is your sensation that is getting agitated it is your sensation that is feeling an unpleasant feeling 
it's the sensation that is disturbing you you know sometimes you're you're anxious sometimes you're sad sometimes you're depressed it is the sensation that is feeling getting giving you that feeling of very unpleasantness it is not allowing you to feel in a particular manner it is holding you back when we eat certain food you know people who basically for instance who who take certain intoxicants whether smoking whether drinking each of them is nothing but an act of the conditioning of every cell in your body the conditioning of every sensation in your body now the positive precepts is positioned in such a manner as to go against the conditioning of these processes it's actually a deconditioning to decondition your cells to decondition your cell to detoxify your cell this is exactly what the positive precepts are so the first one is that is the word called metta or loving kindness in buddhism we have something called metta bhavana in which we practice loving kindness you know there are various levels in which you have to do metta bhavana metta bhavana is a way of deconditioning every single sensation and cell in your body and filling it with love rather than with hate rather than with anxiety rather than with fear you're filling it with some with a beautiful energy called love and in doing that you begin to cleanse your body to purify your body the second one is with open minded generosity this open minded generosity in buddhism is generally called dana with dana i purify my body dana in buddhism is understood as an act of giving for the sake of giving not because you want something in return it's because you want to cultivate this notion of giving in you so you give because you want to cultivate giving you give in order to not only cultivate but to turn your whole being into a giving being because giving itself is like a medicine you know when you begin to give without re- expecting anything re- in return you are actually taking a medicine to detoxify your body of this constant need constant binary need to give in order to get something back in return so in buddhism the act of dana or the act of given giving generally is spoken in terms of merits so the more you give you get merits what is these merits the reconditioning of your body so when you do when you engage in open minded generosity when you cultivate open minded generosity when you affirm that act you are purifying your body with stillness simplicity and contentment the third positive precepts this is generally referred to as what we call annapanna or sometimes samadhi people who have done annapanna will know that annapanna is a way of stilling your mind and the minute you still your mind and annapanna is such a simple act it's not so difficult you just have to sit down and just put all your whole being into concentrating about the the breathing process that's it it's such a simple act to do and people who have done it and who have reached the second and the third day will realize how content they are when the mind is not disturbing at all so in buddhism samadhi or annapanna as a practice annapanna sati as a practice is a way to decondition the body and why so it deconditions what is generally called uh, this idea called the uh, stillness simplicity and contentment in which you are not disturbed and the minute you are not disturbed the body begins to experience a tremendous sense of cleanliness or purification that takes place the fourth one i think is a important one with truthful communication i purify my speech now here you come to speech now why is this so important in buddhism truthful communication is not just for the sake of truthful communication it is like a medicine a person who consciously put effort to speak truthfully as the same time is purifying one speech all the time now as human beings living in a world of this particular kind we are always trapped sometimes we say things we don't want to say sometimes we we lie sometimes we have to lie for the sake of lying also sometimes but when someone puts conscious effort to speak the truth as much as is possible to speak you know as much as the context allow you to speak then remember that that act of truthful communication is purifying your speech in totality because we are so trapped in speaking in a particular manner so this positive precept is very important in that particular sense 
And the final one is with mindfulness, clear and radiant, I purify my mind. Mindfulness in Buddhism is generally referred to as one of the noble eightfold part called Samma Sati, to be mindful. And this mindfulness is clear and radiant. The minute you are clear and radiant, which basically means by Samma Sati, we say we have the capacity to observe the thought. And as you observe the thought, you begin to detach yourself from this thought. And the minute you begin to detach yourself from the thought and you can see the thought as it is, as it is taking place in your mind, that in Buddhism is a technique of purifying your mind itself. Now you don't identify yourself with the thought, now you identify yourself with the mind anymore. So these are generally what we call the five positive precepts, especially in terms of three components of body, one component of speech and one component of mind. Now, if you were to look at the totality of this, it links very closely to the Noble Eightfold Path, especially the Shila component, which is Samma Vakka, speech, Samma Kamanto, action, and Samma Ajiva, which is life and livelihood. So it is closely connected to the Noble Eightfold Path, this affirmation of some of these actions. Now, the only thing that is important for us in India to note is that you know, many of us have just come to Buddhism and we are starting to know Buddhism. We are starting to be, to engage with Buddhism. We are starting to understand what this Buddhism is all about. And many of us who come from the Buddha and his Dhamma, we read the Buddha and his Dhamma, we are trying to understand what Baba Sahib said in the Buddha and his Dhamma. Uh, we should also begin to read the positive precepts, not merely as an end point of the purification of body, speech and mind but also as the cultivation process that leads to what is called a cleansing of that body. You know, our body is full of historical pain, full of historical hurt. How will you cleanse this? How will you clean yourself from that historical hurt and historical pain that we have carried for so long? How will we cleanse ourselves of this anger that traps and imprisons us as human beings? How can you Free yourself from this prison of hurt, from this prison of sorrow, from this prison of suffering. How, what do you do? So in Buddhism, the positive precepts are meant to make you come out of some of this imprisonment that we have been trapped in historically. So for us, cultivation is very important. We must cultivate metta, cultivate dana, cultivate samadhi, cultivate truthful communication, cultivate mindfulness. Not for the sake of anything, because it is one of the acts, one of the practices that will help us free ourselves from this imprisonment of suffering, of anger, of sorrow, of anxiety, of historical hurt and historical pain. So I think in that particular light, it's very important to understand the positive precepts. And this is a practice. It is not merely a theory. It's a practice that you must constantly affirm these acts wherever you're doing, whatever you're doing at whatever point in time. So probably we can reflect much more later the deeper details of it. But I think at this point in time, we can stop here and we can probably have more discussions later to kind of clarify some of the smaller concepts that is embedded in the positive precepts. So let me end here, Sujit. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for this very, uh, uh, very simple, but very uh, broader uh, practice driven concept. You simplified it. So thank you very much, sir. And thank you very much all for watching this video. We will come back with the new concepts. If you like this channel, please subscribe the channel and share this channel. Thank you. Jai Bhim Namo Buddha.